This is Selma Schimmel at the Multidisciplinary Cancer Congress 2011 in Stockholm. Hello, Professor Dr. Kier. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And I'm hoping you can talk to us a little bit about your perspective on what's happening at this meeting and a little more updates from our last discussion. I think that this Congress has uh, added a little more to the story that we have seen evolving over the last few years around the uh, emergence of new treatments for patients with lung cancer based upon the identifi identification of a biomarker. Um, it uh, comes back to the story of personalised medicine which is evolving in many different cancer types and in lung cancer this is uh, good news because for many lung cancer patients there has not been much uh, good news uh, in, the, in past years. So. Um, little bits more added to the story around uh, emerging markers and emerging drugs and just more data coming along. I, th I think that we talked about this with so many physicians that as we can identify biomarkers and understand the molecular characteristics of cancer, it's such a huge paradigm shift in how we treat these patients and lung cancer represents probably one of the most dynamic cancers, there are others too, where the integration of these new technologies and, and the diagnostic and an anal analytical process of tissue is imperative. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, it, uh, it's, it's either a, ma a matter of trying to identify uh, sometimes the target for the drug or sometimes it's a factor in the tumour which uh, affects the metabolism of the drug or the effect of the drug in some other way. So. One, one way or another, these molecular characteristics seem to influence the, uh, the, the efficacy of the drug. Professor Kerr, for patients that are listening or viewing this interview, what are the things that you could tell them that are probably the most important talking points that they need to have with their physicians as to help them understand even the patient role in being sure that certain tests are being conducted on tissue so they can maximize their, po their, their treatment options? Well, I think the, the discussion has to be based upon the particular disease, the particular tumor that the patient has because, as you've mentioned already, lung cancer is a very uh, mi very heterogeneous mixture of different, uh, different cancer types. And depending on the, on the cancer type as defined by our traditional diagnoses, um, different uh, molecular targets may, may be more or less likely to be present. Um, so a conversation would be appropriate around having the tumour tested for uh, what would be the, the appropriate um, markers or the uh, targets in that particular case. Um, that conversation has to go along with uh, a discussion on whether actually there is the material available to carry out the test. One of the problems that we have in patients who have lung cancer is actually obtaining enough material um, in terms of the, the biopsy sample uh, to allow all of the tests that uh, we would like to do and in the future this is going to become an even greater problem as more and more markers emerge, more and more questions need to be asked um, on behalf of the patient um, from the same unfortunately often very small samples. If a patient has already initiated treatment and as new molecular markers and biomarkers become known, is it possible to go back and take tissue and resample tissue uh, even if treatment's been initiated? Is there a tissue that stays in like a paraffin block or something that a doctor can go back and access? Yes, the, absolutely. The, um, the, the, the standard practice is if, if a patient has had a, had a biopsy and a diagnosis of cancer is made on that sample, the sample is then stored in the pathology lab uh, and it becomes, um, the regulations vary from country to country but, but certainly in my own country in the UK it, it becomes part of the patient's record and it's kept forever. So it's available in theory forever. Um, it, it sometimes of course gets used up 
to make the diagnosis in the first place if there isn't very much there. And if it's a complex diagnosis, we often have to do more work, so we may use it up. But for most patients, samples will exist in the PATH lab, and they can be reinterrogated if new markers become available, um, we can go back and look at them. It sounds like where we are today in lung cancer, ideally a patient does not want to initiate treatment until they have been tested and their tissue analyzed to see what biomarkers or mutations might present. Well, I think that's very much becoming uh, the standard of care now, that uh, as well as a diagnosis being made on, on the sample that's taken from the patient, then consideration is, 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 is made of testing for uh, a number of different biomarkers. Um, the truth is that in lung cancer, uh, this extra uh, bit of investigation is to some extent in its infancy. We don't have so many biomarkers that, that are um, well established and, and are used as, as a matter of routine. But those, uh, those biomarkers are increasing in number. I mean, I, there are probably um, several that have, have emerged as, as really likely candidates even in the time since we last spoke. So it, it's a very rapidly changing uh, environment. So with the number of new uh, biomarkers being identified and hopefully new targeted therapies coming in, in the pipeline here, what is the role now of chemotherapy? Where do you see chemotherapy going in regard to combination therapy with some of these new uh, targeted agents? Well, it's interesting. There have been a lot of discussions and uh, I, I take part in these discussions uh, as a pathologist. I'm, I'm not directly involved, obviously, in, in prescribing chemotherapy, but uh, I have an interest in a lot of the decisions that go on leading up to it. And the, there is a debate, uh, certainly, out there um, around whether chemotherapy will be replaced by targeted agents um, against um, a variety of molecular markers, or Will these molecular markers uh, and, and rather the drugs that are selected by these molecular markers, will they be used in conjunction with uh, chemotherapy? So will the patient receive both? Or perhaps the patient will receive one followed by the other? And I think there are lots of questions still that have to be answered in that regard. Uh, certainly, as of now, there are some targeted agents that are the preferred drug of choice to be given instead of chemotherapy, because they have been shown to be superior. Some other targeted agents appear to be uh, best deployed in conjunction with chemotherapy. Some of them may be given after chemotherapy has been given. We already know some of this, but I think there are uh, many possible combinations that, that still have to be worked out. You know, it feels like lung cancer is almost like the poster child disease for personalized medicine. It's just the perfect example of how rapidly personalized medicine is changing the profile of a disease. Well, it's certainly a rapidly progressing issue in lung cancer, there's no question. Uh, the, the way, of course, was led probably by breast cancer as the best example and, and uh, colorectal cancer, one or two other tumors. But uh, given the particular complexities that we have to work with in lung cancer, um, th there would appear to be many opportunities for different uh, targeted agents given the variety of different uh, molecular abnormalities that appear to be present in, in different lung cancers. Uh, but um, there are still a lot of questions to be answered. Thank you very much, Professor Kerr, for sort of zooming in a little bit with a magnifying glass on what's happening at this meeting, and I hope that we'll be speaking to you uh, again at uh, perhaps the ASCO meeting. My pleasure, thank you very much.